Ciao friends, Zoe here. So I'm on my way to a cocktail tour with the Roman guy and I'm super excited because I haven't really done much bar hopping since I've been in Rome so now I'm gonna know where all the awesome places to go for a nightlife are and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Basically, the idea is the aperitivo, according to one legend, starts from ancient Roman times. Yeah, remember the truth. Definitely. Definitely yeah. the truth. Yeah. You know, Italians have to base everything back to ancient Roman times. They tie everything back to that. So, of course, aperitivo coming from the Latin word to aperitivo, to open. So, they say that when you have certain drinks, it opens up your stomach to let you eat more. Even you have like little tiny snacks. You eat that, it opens up your stomach, you eat more afterwards. So, that's the idea. The only problem is that in ancient Roman times, usually for a drink they start off with white wine with honey inside. Not really what we think of aperitivo as today, more of a sweet drink. Yeah. Fast forward, okay, around 1800 years. So now we're in Venice. Alright, now in Venice, the main drink they have is the spritz, which we're going to have now. Now, the spritz we're going to have here are a little bit different. They're going to, they're kind of unique and new ways of trying to, to actually present it. But the idea of the spritz, does anyone know the actual history of the spritz? You guys all know it. That's okay. No, that's okay. That's good. So you know I'm, I'm not lying. When I'm the story. They're backing me up. So basically during the Habsburg Empire, the early 1800s, you had the Austrian officers and merchants who were around up in the Veneto area. And basically the wine in Italy was a little stronger than what they're used to having. And so they'd ask me to do a spritzen, right? Which was like a spray, with a little bit of water inside of it. And so that's how it actually started. And then afterwards, but it was just regular water, not even carbonated water. And so what happened is about 100 years later, when carbonated water became more popular, then they actually started going and putting that inside of it. Making it more easy even for women to start drinking. All right, so I don't want to tell you the spritz we're going to have yet. I'd like it to be a surprise. Because also the way it's kind of eye candy, it's going to be nice for you to look at. Suffice to say that classic spritz is usually prosecco, with some kind of liqueur inside, usually a bitter one, and then a shot of carbonated. That's it. Okay, so we're gonna get the classic spritz, spritzes, spritzes, one more, spritzes. about the Pantheon is the fact that as you walk inside, you're going inside a building that's 1,850 years old, unchanged for the most part. You know, you look at the actual architectural phenomenon of it, the size of the dome, the columns, how actually heavy they are, where they came from, all the way from Egypt. But again, you you know about that stuff. Okay, you've been on tours, you know the area. So inside, you guys know that Raphael has been buried in there. Uh, I like to talk about Raphael for a few reasons. First of all, he was a playboy. Right? He was kind of the Casanova of the 16th century. He was a party guy. Uh, obviously. Obviously. Okay, and he obviously had many women in his life. Now, what a lot of people do not know is that buried inside there next to him is his longtime fiance, Maria Bibiana. For six years, they were engaged. He didn't want to get engaged, but in the end, some of his friends prodded him on as actually, it was the niece of a pope or a cardinal at the time. And so he, he said, okay, I'll get engaged. Never got married in the end. Okay, so she obviously imagine this poor woman six years waiting to get married to him. It did not happen in the end. He was too busy with his other girlfriend called La Fornarina, who was actually the daughter of a baker. Okay, <clears throat> over there in Trastevere. She is not buried inside. But that was the main idea. That would be okay. awesome. That would be awesome. I'm buried on the other side of it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here. Just <laughs> so basically, in the end, he died at the young age of 37. Okay. As the story goes, one night he had a passionate encounter with a few different women. Next day, got a fever and died. So he went out with a bang. But the idea being is that 
So the idea is this, that as the story goes, he got pretty, he got sick, he wouldn't tell the doctor what he was sick of because he was embarrassed. They diagnosed him for the wrong thing and he died at 37. which actually means fig tree. Now what's interesting is that the fig tree that you see is not that old. It's been here for around 30 years. If you guys come here in the daytime, obviously you see the chess players in here. So it's called the Circolo Skaki, so you actually have a club uh, for chess. And it's the president of that club that actually decided 30 years ago that he planted the fig tree, and they play under the fig tree even to this day, every single day. It's kind of a cute, nice story. Uh, you didn't know that? I knew about the fig tree. I didn't know that it was the chess guy. So I'm trying. I love the chess guy. You're doing good. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain the history of the drinks afterwards. But just so basically, the Americanos is you're going to have Campari, Vermouth, and soda water. And then the Negroni is Campari, Vermouth, and gin. Three part, one part, one part, one part. So obviously, Negroni is a little bit stronger of a drink. Americano is a little bit lighter. What do you guys do? Negroni. That's where the bread removed. Okay. And so what they actually did inside of there is a drink they formed uh, in the Cafe Camparino in the area. What happened is during Prohibition times, a lot of Americans came over and they were drinking this and they loved it. And so as kind of an honor to them, they actually went and changed the Italians changed the name to Americano. So that's the story of my drink that I'm having. Am I okay? Am I there? Alright, now what happens is, now we fast forward around 40 years. Alright, now we're in Florence. And we have Count Negroni. Negroni. <laughs> okay, and he's in one of his favorite cafes in Florence. And he basically says, look, he liked Americano, but he says, I need something a little bit stronger. Put gin inside. I don't want soda water in my drink. Put the gin inside. <laughs> and that's the beginning, that's the birthplace of the Negroni. <laughs> yeah, we did. So you said Count Negroni. To the bottom. All the way to the bottom. To the bottom. This is exactly what I want to do. A lot of locals like to come here. So the word freni frizione actually means breaks and Natalie? French clutch. Clutch. Okay. And clutches. Because originally it was an actual mechanic shop. Converted now into an actual bar. So at this place, usually I let everyone have their own cocktail. So this is a very, very cocktail bar. Okay, so you can get any kind of cocktail you want inside. Standard Italian cocktails, as we said, we think everyone's wine in Italy, but over the years, they've kind of cultured this new idea of the drinks. And as we were talking about before, Italians are very much into detail of their cocktails that they actually drink. And so if you watch them make drinks, they're very much into every little piece of detail. And I think over the last five years, they've become actually very good at making cocktails, even though a lot of foreigners coming over don't realize this yet. Check it out. It's kind of, it's very unique. We call it the classical. It's kind of a <laughs> it's kind of a place that you have to visit. It's kind of hard to understand unless you actually have been inside and tried it. So I want to keep it kind of a secret. I don't want to tell you beforehand. Let's just go and try and enjoy. Come on inside.
guys, so I'm all done the tour now. It was so fun. Honestly, that might have been my favorite tour that I've done in Rome so far. It was so cool. I got to check out so many cool places. And if any of you guys are in Rome in the next year, let me know because I definitely want to take you out for a drink because those were some of the most awesome places I've ever been to in my entire life. So yeah, I am going to meet some more friends now to go out and have some fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I'm sorry if the lighting was a little bit dark. It did get darker as the night progressed, but I hope that there's some great content for you guys and some great shots. I truly had so much fun and I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me. I'll see you again in my next video and thanks again to the Roman guy for hooking it up. It was so awesome. Bye!